will fill this temple right now. Fill this place with your power. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God. We pray that everyone be loose today to worship you. As many bound in, in this place this morning. We set you free. In the mighty name of Jesus. We come against every unclean spirit. Every foul spirit. Every manipulation of darkness. We come against you right now. We bind those activities. And we cast you out of this place. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you Heavenly Father. It's going to be heaven on earth today. Your power move in this place. Atmosphere of miracles. And power. And deliverance. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you Father for answering our prayer this day. One more time just lift your hands to heaven. And worship the King of Kings. One more time, just say wonderful thing to the Lord of Lords. We bless your name. We give you honor. You are worthy. Give you all the glory today, Jesus. You are worthy. You are worthy this morning of our praise. You are worthy this morning of our song. Come on, let's put our hands together for the Lord God Almighty. We give you glory, Jesus. We give you glory, Lord. Hallelujah. I know it feels good in the house today. Let's bless him. Let's worship him. Hallelujah. How beautiful are you, Lord. It's your word.
of the shadows Step out of the grave Break into the wild end And don't be afraid If you can Run into wide open spaces Grace is waiting for you Dance like the weight has been lifted Grace is waiting
Come on, let's bless the Lord because He's good. He is He's wonderful. If we could stand here, many of us could just testify of how He has provided this week, how He has brought us to this point today. Amen. You are good, you are good when there's nothing good in me. You are love, you are love on display for all to see. You are light, you are light when the darkness closes in. You are hope, you are hope, you you all my sin. You are peace, you are peace. You are peace when my fear is crippling. You are true. You are true. Even in my wandering. Even in my wandering. You are joy. You are joy. You are joy. You're the reason that I sing. You are life. You are life. In you, death has lost its sting. And oh, I'm right into your arms I'm running to your arms the riches of your love will always be enough nothing compares to your embrace light of the world forever Of 
of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares. Nothing compares to your Come on, embrace. nothing, nothing compares. It's the light of the world. Okay, just to focus on Jesus for a moment here. Come on, my heart. My heart will sing. I came to worship you, Lord. No then Jesus. Jesus. Come on, there's power in that name. Jesus. Say my heart will sing. My heart will sing. Speak. I speak. 
Come on, we're going to speak that name in authority today. Jesus. Oh, shout Jesus from the mountain. I'm going to shout Jesus. That's what I'm going to do. Jesus in the darkness over every
heavens the are roaring, roaring today. The, the praise of your glory. That's the God we serve today. To we can brag and boast in his presence. Death could not hold. We're gonna see it. They'll tore before you. You silence the most of sin and grace. See, death could not. Death. Death could not hold you. Come on, this is Jesus we're talking about.
Jesus like the fragrance after the rain Jesus 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 when all heaven and earth sing this I believe in our pastors are going to come to us and I want to share this with you that it's this is not just a, a nice song yeah let's keep playing it that I'm singing like I've experienced this man called Jesus and when I, I'm saying to breath to you brethren like when you call on that name something happens this is experience I'm talking from I'm going to share this and we'll sing and hopefully this encourages someone to maybe step out and call on that great name I was much younger, I was at the time single, single, and I remember this particular night, I had made plans with a bunch of friends and all of them had other plans with you know other, either their wives or their wives and children or their husbands. And I remember sitting in my house that Friday night going, God, like, do you want me to be alone all the time? And I just, I heard the voice so loud, but you're not. And I was very vexed with him. And I said, God, well, if you're everything, Jesus, then you come in my room and you be with me. And I, the words I used were, you will come and hug me tonight then. If you can be everything. And I was being very spiteful. Because in my mind, he couldn't do that. He's a spirit. I can't feel him like that. Weeks later, I drove out to Regina. I was in a service. And I was kneeling at the altar. <laughs> And a sister, I heard her from behind me. She tapped me on the shoulder and she said, Sister Nidra, get up. And she put her arms around me and she said, The Holy Ghost told me that these are his arms around you today. You cannot tell me that God is not everything. He is my everything today. So when we sing this song, know that if you need blank, he can be that for you. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, there's something about that name, there's just something, something about that name. Jesus, let all heaven 
have a praise in this house this morning. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated this morning. We're so glad to have you here at Believer's Church. We welcome you today on this long weekend, and uh, we're glad that you're here. Uh, I, I'm going to just take a few moments this, uh, this morning, do a little bit of housekeeping stuff for, for our local church. If you're a guest, uh, you can just uh, smile and bear through it for a few minutes today. Um, uh, <clears throat> I was debating on uh, talking about some of these things because, wow, so many of our church isn't here this morning. Sickness has swept through and others are, are working. I just kept getting text messages and calls this morning. Uh, so we're, we're cut down dramatically today from our normal Sunday crowd, but we're going to we're going to talk about a few of these things in a way, and if we have to reiterate them over the coming weeks, we'll, we'll do that. Uh, I think, we, do we have the video back there of uh, our multicultural? Can we play that right now? Let's start with something really cool. This made me cry. <laughs> Que el Señor se ha acordado de ti. He still remembers you. Que el Señor se ha acordado de ti. He's always remembered. Praise God. Praise God. I just want to say that uh, the camera adds 100 pounds. Uh, <clears throat> That was put together by our creative team. Aren't they doing an amazing job? <laughs> Praise God. This is a newly formed team that's just come together over the last month or two, and the stuff they're putting out on our social media and stuff like this is just incredible. So you, if you are not uh, actively sharing our stuff from the church, hey, you need to help us. That is free advertisement we don't even have to pay for. These guys are putting out some amazing Woo! content. Hey, Amen. Hey, hey, yeah, yeah. We are very blessed in this church. I'm telling you, from the teams and the different people and the wonderful uh, congregation we have, our Believer's Church is extremely blessed. And this is just a, a little piece of that. So, But you can help us by sharing that and getting it out and letting your friends see what's going on here at Believer's Church. So we thank them for that. If you want to become part of, um, of the creative team, Brother John is the director. You can see him. And that's the type of stuff that they're doing, and they're going to be doing lots more coming up. I did see um, uh, a reel, I think it was, uh, about baptisms that they're getting ready to release as well. It's uh, just amazing stuff that they're doing. Praise God. All right, let's, uh, can we have the next picture that I sent you? Now, about the parking. Did I send it? I'm sure I sent it. Let me just double check it. I'll just send it again. I just sent two, the second one I sent. 
So <clears throat> this morning, like I said, we're, 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 we're crowd is, is, is down, but when uh, our normal Sundays that we're having, uh, the parking lot is, is jammed, and so we are, we're having to try to get a little bit creative with, uh, with what we're doing with, as far as parking. I talked to the neighbor here. They just sold this building behind us, so I was like, oh, no. But I spoke with the new owner, and he is very kind and very gracious. I was telling the, the those at prayer meeting last night, he said, oh, he said, you're Wayne Bustard. He said, I, I've heard about you. I said, how did you hear about me? He said, from the, the guy who owns the battery shop down the road. I said, how does he know about me? <laughs> and they were saying what an amazing church, Believer's Church was, and the good things that are happening there. He said, I'm so excited to be your neighbor. And uh, he said, you can use my parking as much as you need on Sundays. And so we're just very, very thankful for that. I'm going to come right up here. Yeah. Brother Dylan, bring me those signs over there, first of all. So for 12 years, I've had the, the privilege of having reserve pastor parking. And I used to threaten people, if you park in my spot, there's a $500 fine. This morning, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lead the way, I'm asking you folks to help me with parking. So I took down my sign, I took down Pastor Dylan's sign, there is no more pastor parking. I parked over on the other side, it was actually a nice little walk this morning, I'll say that. So this up here is our parking lot. And how many seen our new container out there? Hallelujah. Oh. Praise God. So that's our, that's our, you can't really see the yellow very good. It says believers member parking. That's where we want you to park. Um, where are we here? Believers Church. So this is kind of out front. Uh, this is where I used to park and the staff. We're asking as much as possible, let's leave that open for guest parking. Amen? The problem is this. We have 360 chairs in this sanctuary, but parking, last Sunday we had 217 people here. The parking lot was jammed. So we can't get 360 people in the chairs if there's no parking, right? Simple math. So we're going to make room. So what we're asking you to do is to, is to park in here, and then the next building over is where they're allowing us to park as overflow. This is where I parked this morning, right there. So if you will park over there, especially our staff, uh, you can park there. Now we, right up behind our building, between our church and that street, you can park anywhere up in there, we own this piece of land. We are going to be talking to the city about maybe rezoning that as, as a parking lot here. And, uh, but even until then, if we have to, Especially for our staff, I put believer staff parking, uh, the staff. If, if this parking lot gets jammed up, we'll have our staff park on the grass and, uh, and free up some more parking. Does that all make sense? How many will wave your hands and say, I'm going to help you with that, Pastor? Thank you. I have to say, because I, I, I usually have a lot of faith, Brother Josiah, but this, this parking thing really had me worried. I thought, nobody's going to do this. And I pulled in this morning. There were eight cars of our staff already parked over in the new lot. That's awesome. Praise God. So if you will help us with that. How many want to see Believer's Church continue to grow and, and develop? Amen. So to facilitate that, we, we need your help with this parking. So if we can park, park in the compound, overflow parking, keep this lot over there open as, as much as possible for new people coming in so that they don't have to search around for a place to park. And of course, the streets are open. You can park in the street. And, uh, and even up and down this way, you can park over there. Amen? Amen? All right. That one's off the list. Well, almost. Saying that, we are looking for some parking lot attendants, people who will be willing to be out in. It would be nice to have three every Sunday. And again, this is just for Sundays at this point that we're talking about. Wednesday nights, Saturday nights is, is, is okay. This is mainly for Sunday mornings. But we're looking for parking lot attendants. We, we'd be nice to have one out in this lot, one in the front, and one over in the side. If you are willing to be a parking lot attendant, would you come and see me or 
or Pastor Dylan uh, after the service and say, hey, I would love to be out there and help park cars. And uh, this, and you might not think that that's an important role. It's very important because our parking situation right now is dependent on, on, on whether we're going to be able to grow this church. Amen? So if you are willing to help us with that, please see Pastor Dylan or myself right after this service. We'll speak with you about that. Uh, Pastor Dylan is going to talk a little bit more about this, so I'm not going to talk uh, much about it. We are changing the way we do things uh, in, in some areas here. Uh, we're doing, we've, in, in the fellowship hall in the community center, we've painted that wall that used to be green. We've painted it, and it uh, looks nice there. We've set up some tables. That is going to be the new meet the pastor area. So at the end of every service, we're going to, uh, we're going to have uh, somebody come up and hold up a sign If you want to meet the pastor, follow me. She's going to lead them out over there. I'm going to leave the altar service momentarily, go out and meet new people as they're coming into the church and shake their hand and get to know them. Amen. So just so if you see me disappear for a few minutes, that's where I've gone is to greet our new people that are coming. How many know that that's important? Amen. The front rows, you may have noticed this morning, are, are reserved, and they're going to be reserved from here until eternity. Uh, they are reserved for our staff, uh, for altar workers and department leaders and whatnot. So many times I'm looking for altar workers, and I'm trying. Now I know where they're at. They're right here. So if you would help us with that, just keep this front, the front row in every section reserved for our staff members. We would appreciate that, and then that will also help keep some of the, the commotion um, off of the front row as well. Sometimes our video people have a very difficult time uh, getting around the ones that are kids that are doing cartwheels <clears throat> in front of the pulpit. Um, so we'll, we'll put our staff on the front row. Is that all right? Everybody with me so far? How many know there needs to be order in the house of the Lord? Amen. How many know that worship is always in order? Amen. I'm not talking about getting excited. We want, we want you in the front. We want you worshiping and, and but we, we don't want, you know, intoxicated people doing their thing, okay? Does that make sense? All right. The joys of being an inner city church. We have, speaking of which, we have also, uh, we have uh, an ushers team that we put together a few months ago. Can, are our ushers doing an amazing job or what? Can we give our ushers a hand? They are busy. I see uh, some of our ushers are, are not here today, but they're the, they're the ones in the, in the light, or kind of the, I don't know what color, blue, royal blue blazers, we got, uh, and we got a couple ladies as well, and they've been doing an amazing job. They, uh, they're busy, and so we had a meeting with them. Um, we, we said, we, we just realized that they were so busy ushing that uh, we needed to add another layer to that. So we are adding a security team into, into the Believer's Church here as well. So this will be uh, just to keep things running in smoothly and in order here. And to keep, uh, they'll be doing rounds while you're in church, keeping an eye on your vehicle. Amen. Everybody say praise the Lord. Praise keeping an eye on our premises. Uh, Ryan, where did he go? He stepped out right at the wrong time. Oh, there he is. He's in the back. Come on up here, Ryan. We're going to deputize him this morning. Sister Vivian, just stand up for a second. Turn around. Everybody, all of our staff have blue ID cards like Sister Vivian has. Brother Ryan's is red. If you see the red card coming, you know you're in trouble. (laughs) All right, so he is going to be heading up a security team. If you want to be involved in security, you can come speak to me or speak to him after service, and uh, we'll get you set up there. We're just trying to keep, we want you to feel good about being in the house of the Lord. We want to keep things in order and we want to keep you safe. We want to keep the cars and everything in in order. Amen. So we're just doing our best to make sure that when people come to Believer's Church, they know that this house is set in order. Amen. How many know that God is a God of order? Amen. The last thing I want to do this morning, and I, I felt this in my spirit, and, uh, And again, with our crowd being so low this morning, I thought, well, God, do I, do I do it? But I just feel that we need to start somewhere.
our church has been growing, and the parking is becoming an issue. Sunday school, uh, they're running out of room there. We're making some changes. We put the shipping container because we're trying to make room for other things, get stuff out of the building into the shipping container. Uh, we're doing everything we can do to utilize the, the space that we have here. The Lord spoke to me <clears throat> earlier in the week and said, it is time it is time that Believer's Church starts a building fund. This is something in the 12 years that I've been here, we've never really had a, a designated building fund. I believe that the Lord is going to grow this ministry and that we are going to need parking. Uh, we're going to need to either renovate these facilities, buy other facilities, whatever, whatever the Lord leads us to do. But I felt like God prompted me and said, it's time for, the, for Believer's Church to start a building fund, and start looking towards the future. Amen? So whether it's creating a parking lot out behind, that's going to cost us some money. Whether it's having to take down walls, put up walls, or whether it's moving uh, whatever God has for Believer's Church, we, we want all of that. Nothing will be done in the dark. Nothing will be done in, a, in the closet. Everything will be done openly. We're not, don't worry, don't panic. We're not going to sell the building and you didn't know anything about it. Uh, before we did anything like that, there would be business be meetings and, and all of that sort of stuff. But I do believe that we need to look towards the future. We've been maintaining, we've been trying to play catch up in some areas. But if you really believe that God is who he says he is and he's going to do what, he's gonna, what he said he's going to do, then we need to prepare for that. Amen. 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 And so what I want to ask us to do this morning and, and, and I, I just want to say this, the kingdom of God in an area is only as strong as the local church. Hello? If there is no base, if there is no place for people, what, what drives me crazy is Christians who just wander aimlessly, throwing darts at everybody else, but never planted or never submitted anywhere. Hello? Praise God. If, God, if the city of Winnipeg is going to be affected, it's going to be affected because of, of strong local churches, amen, who believe that they have a mandate from God and that we're here for such a time as this. Can I get an amen in the house? How many believe you're here for such a time as this? How many believe you're here to usher in an end time revival that'll scare the devil out of the devil? Praise God. Praise God. So this morning, with our congregation cut in half, we are still going to do this. We're going to start a building fund project. I'm going to hand out envelopes. These are our regular tithing envelopes. I have personally highlighted the building fund area where I want you to put your, your total in there, put your name and everything on here. And I'm going to give you to the end of October. And I'm asking every person in here who believes that what this, what this ministry is doing and what God is doing in this ministry and believes that God has a future for this church to take one of these envelopes this morning. If you've got $50,000 to put in there, that would be wonderful. If you've got $5,555, $5, you hear me? Because this morning, it's not really about the amount. It's about, I feel like this morning we're casting our vote. They say, yes, God, I'm on board with what you're doing. Yes, God, I believe in the future. I'm serious. If you can only give $5, will you please take one of these envelopes today and put a $5 bill in there by the end of October and say, yes, I believe in Believer's Church, and I believe in what God is doing in this local assembly. Can I get an amen in the house? Yeah. Pastor Negra, Pastor Dylan, Pastor Osei, please come here. Oh, just lay your hands on these. Father, I believe I've heard from you. Lord, there is vision on this house. There is destiny that has hovered over this house for the 12 years that I have been here. God, we are stepping into that and we are preparing for the future of what you're about to do in this assembly. And so, God, I pray as we hand out these envelopes, God, that you would give people the ability to bless this ministry in this house. God, that you would bless them, Lord, for their giving and their faithfulness. Amen. And I ask it now, in Jesus' name, in Jesus name. amen and amen. amen. You can take the second one. Amen. I want to hand these out personally. 
It may take a few minutes, but I just, I have to obey the Lord. The Lord told me to do this. I feel. Now listen to me very carefully. I am not making you a guarantee that if you put $100 in here, God's going to give you $10,000 back. That's not what this is. That's not what this is. That stuff drives me crazy. All this simply is, is saying, here's my offering for the future of Believer's Church. Is that okay? No pressure. I'm not going to come stare you down. But I will stay on the platform. Is there any, if you want one, would you wave your hand at me? Jesus, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Can I just tell you one more thing as I'm handing these out? All the dollars that will come in here is not going to go to a private jet. It's not going to go to... All the dollars that come in this is going to go towards the future, whether it's renos, buying of land, something that is going to further the kingdom of God. I just want to make that very clear today. Praise God. I hope I did enough of these. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Look at this. My Lord. You know what's funny? I was going to do this after I preached because I thought I'll preach a real good message and they'll be ready to God, God spoke to me and said, you don't need to do that because these, these people know how to give. Just present the need. Look at this. This is amazing. Road. Do you need another one? All right, God bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. God bless. You want one of those, brother? No, I'm going to do it myself. Thank you for the. I, I just felt like God told me to do it by for myself. about that. God bless you. God bless you. Brother Walter, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Whoa. Tell me what you want to give. By, by the end of the month. 
Praise God. Have I missed anybody? We gave out 72 of those this morning. Isn't that amazing? So somebody asked me, they said, what if I want to give monthly? Absolutely, you can do that. Our regular tithe, this is a regular tithing envelope. They have building fund on there. You can do that. And what I felt like the Lord spoke to me as well that I, I didn't say was the fifth Sunday, the Sundays that have five, the, the months that have five Sundays, we normally do communion in that service. We're going to continue to do communion in that Sunday but we're also going to make that a building fund Sunday. So we'll do communion and we'll take up a building fund offering every month that has five Sundays. Amen? And that'll just help us keep it always in our mind. So October, this month does have five Sundays. So the 29th, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll um, give you to have this one in. And then after that, you can do monthly if you want. You can do weekly. You can give us however many times you want to give. It'll go into that special account, and uh, but I guess it, what is it? About four times a year that that happens. So December and March, we'll do this again, and uh, we're just preparing. God spoke to me. You're, I'm going to preach in a few minutes. But God's taking this church somewhere. Amen. Thank you for your giving. Praise God. Is that exciting or what? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says where there's, where there's no vision, the people perish. I'm thankful that we have vision in this house, that we're going somewhere. God is, the, the best days for the church are ahead of us. Amen. They're not behind us. God is raising up this church and I believe other churches that, that are remnant churches that are holding on to the gospel message. So you're not just giving to some fund that's going to 10 years down the line, cut it down and, and uh, water down the message. No, we're going to preach the truth of the word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. So pastor said it earlier. Um, before I do that, actually, if there's any guests here, can we give all of our guests a hand clap? We welcome you to Believer's Church. The crowd is so low because it's uh, Thanksgiving weekend. But if you're a guest here, we got a gift for you. If you would pull out your smartphone uh, camera and scan that QR code and fill out a digital connect card and take that card to the hospitality desk after the service, we got a gift for you. Maybe you don't want to do the phone way. You can fill out a physical card at the desk and turn it in there and we have a gift for you after the service. Um, on that card, there's things like, I want to know what's, what this church is about. I want to talk to a pastor. I want to know what kind of programs you have to offer. We'll be happy to answer any of those questions for you. Also, if you, you are a guest here, Pastor Wayne kind of mentioned it earlier, but around the end of the service, uh, when, when they give the appeal for people to come and pray, um, Sister Vivian, can you stand up actually? She's going to have a sign that says, follow me to meet the pastor, and uh, you'll be escorted out to the community center in the back there, and we have a little reserved area. Actually, Pastor Wayne was in here, put it in where... I feel guilty because I didn't help. Come on, somebody. But uh, um, he painted the wall back there and he put in the work and there's a little, there's a little uh, section there for meeting the pastor. There's drinks, treats, 
all of that. And uh, we, we, want, we want the guests to be able to talk to the pastor. We want people who've been coming and maybe want to shake the pastor's hand and, and who have never met him because maybe you think that's a little far-fetched, but um, what's been happening is part of church growth is people meeting the pastor, wanting to know what he's about and, and meeting him and shaking his hand and all that. And uh, there's people that's been coming and uh, they have never even spoke to the pastor. They, and we know that our pastor works a secular job outside of here. And um, so it's hard for him to meet with people during the week or meet um, whenever. So we, we're doing things like this. It's for the growth and the health of the church and to, to, to benefit the body. Amen. So we ask that you do that if you want to speak to him after the service. Now, he's not going to take you through Revelation or a Bible study on um, the second coming or the judgment seat of Christ or anything like that. But if you want to go and have a quick uh, meet the pastor in the back, there's some treats back there, shake his hand, uh, talk to him. All of that is appropriate, and uh, we want to be doing that going forward. All in agreement, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Also, um, after this service, there's a Sunday school meeting in the back. Um, Sister Cheyenne is having a Sunday school meeting in the back after the service. So if you're a teacher, a helper involved in any capacity, please go to the back after the service, and uh, there's going to be a meeting there. Also, they are asking for Sunday school helpers and teachers on Wednesday and Sunday, and also help in the sound booth um, which is Sunday, Wednesday, whenever you're available to do that. And uh, you can speak to Brother Danny about that. Also, on the guitar, I am praying that somebody would be like, yo, I play guitar and I want to help on the worship team. So if you play acoustic guitar, electric guitar, um, and you're take, maybe taking lessons or you know how to play, you know some theory, um, please talk to myself or Pastor Nidra, actually. Speak to Pastor Nidra, and there's a little bit of a separate process for getting involved in the uh, worship team, but uh, please do that. Amen? Praise God. So uh, please do that. C celebrate recovery on Tuesday at 6 o'clock. Um, you guys know all about that. 12-step program for people dealing with hurts, habits, and hang-ups. Wednesday night is the Purple Book, and we got two more lessons left. Uh, praise God. We're going to be learning about the uh, second coming and judgment, or resurrection and judgment. Hallelujah. How many know that Jesus is coming back? He's coming back. Hallelujah. And maybe you have a, a various pre-trib, uh, post-trib, all of those different end times view. Whatever view you hold, Jesus is coming back. The Bible says the same Jesus who you've seen go into heaven, you're going to see him come back in the same like manner as you've seen him go up. I'm waiting for that day when I will see the clouds open up and we will see the Lord coming for his church. Hallelujah. So that's at Wednesday at uh, 7 o'clock. Please make it there. It's going to be a blessed time. Saturday at 7 is um, our prayer meeting. But also on Saturday at 2.30, as you know that we had the storage container uh, installed in the parking lot, we are calling a work day. Um, we almost had to call, I can't remember the guy's name, but from that show Hoarders, come on somebody, because there's a lot of church stuff in here and that's why we got the container. So we're going to be moving stuff into the container, tables, and we almost got, I, can't, I think his name's Billy Mays from Hoarders. And, uh, you know, he goes and cleans out places. And we almost called him to get to the church, but we're going to ask the church first. Uh, we're calling a work day, 2.30 at um, uh, Saturday to move some tables, move um, stuff with, that we don't need anymore, stuff that we don't use because we want to free up space because we need space because we're growing. Amen? Yeah, and actually, how many how many's like, you know what? I'll take a Saturday and come and help move some tables and clear up the church. Praise God. How many, how many throw a hand up and say, you know, what? I'm going to help with that. Amen. Hallelujah. And we'll be on Facebook and on the members page as well. Yes, we need some, some strong buff dudes to move some tables. Amen. Um, Cause they're heavy. Uh, there's lots of heavy things back there, some cabinets and stuff. So please come and help us on Saturday. And, um, it's a good time of work and fellowship at the church. 2.30, and also be on social media, and uh, we'll keep you posted with that. Amen? Amen. So, in the Bible, after creation, the Bible says that there was two people named Cain and Abel, and in Genesis 4.3 it says, the process, 
And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering. But he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you so angry? And why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door, and its desire is for you, but you shall, but you should rule over it. The Bible says there was two brothers, they brought an offering to the Lord, Uh, but there was differences in their offerings. So Abel, he, he gave to God out of the first that he had. He was one of those Christians that said, you know what, I got my paycheck coming in tonight, I'm going to go on the tithely app, and I'm going to pay my tithes before I do anything else. I actually heard a pastor say it before, and it challenged me. Because often what we do is we pay the phone bill, we pay our car bill, we pay our car insurance, and then we whatever's left over, then we pay our tithes out of that. But God blessed um, Abel because before all of that, he said, I'm going to put God first. That's why it's called the first fruits. See, and Cain, on the other hand, brought his leftovers. He, he, it would have been the equivalent today of him doing everything else and being like, hey, if I got some leftover, then I'm going to bless the kingdom of God. I got to make sure all my needs are met first, then I'm blessing God's kingdom. Something that really stood out to me in this scripture is it said when the process of time it came to pass. See, and the process of time will test all Christians, not only in giving, but in praying, in reading, in devoting our time to God, in serving. The process of time will really test our priorities. It will test uh, how much we actually believe the Lord, how much we actually cherish his word and obey his word. See, it's easy to give to God when we have everything going well, when we're on the mountaintop, when we got money in the bank, when... We got a job and we, but God, I believe that he really looks and honors when we say, you know what, everything's not going well, but I'm still going to bless his kingdom. I'm still going to support the local church. I'm going to still do what his word says to do. And the Bible says that um, Cain was jealous of Abel's offering. And I had this happen to me before. And I think some of you did too, before too. Oh, you believe in tithing? You give to the local church? That's like, that's like cult stuff. Like, you're brainwashed. Like, w- like what is this? I- I'm proud to say I wouldn't be up here telling you to give if I didn't uh, believe in tithing. I'm proud to say that I give 10% of my income to the Lord's work every paycheck. I give 10% of my income to God's work every single paycheck. And I, I don't know about you, but I can speak for myself that he blesses me for that. He makes himself real. He shows up in my finances. He makes a way out of nowhere. He is faithful to his word. So I challenge you this morning, and I know there's givers in the house. It wasn't that beautiful what Pastor Wayne just did this morning. Praise God. So I challenge you this morning. Maybe you you haven't tested God in this area. Try him. See if his word's not true. There's, uh, you know, those cheesy commercials on Spike TV back in the day. Money back guaranteed. Hallelujah. He won't fail you. I I promise you. Test God in your finances, and uh, he's going to show up strong. So we're going to sing another course. Sister Diane's in the back if you want to give by debit or credit. We can also go to the Tithely app in the App Store or the Play Store, and we can go to the Believer's Church website under the online giving section. God bless you guys as you give this morning. Um, Believer's Kids is dismissed to your classes. Youth classes dismissed to the back. I'll be teaching youth today. God bless you guys. In Jesus' name, if we can get the offering plates to the front. Hallelujah.
some monitor on this mic, brother, that would be amazing. <clears throat> We're going to turn to 2 Kings chapter 3. If you have your Bibles, I'm going to re- let you remain seated. We have a few scriptures we want to read today. Amen. If I could get some monitor on this mic. Praise God. 2 Corinthians, sorry, 2 Kings chapter 3 verse 5. But it happened when Ahab died that the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. So King Jerome went out of Samaria at that time and mustered all Israel. Then he went and sent to Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, saying, The king of Moab has rebelled against me. Will you go with me to fight against Moab? And he said, I will go up. I am as you are, my people as your people, my horses as your horses. Then he said, which way shall we go up? And he answered, by the way of the wilderness of Edom. And so the king of Israel went with the king of Judah and the king of Edom, and they marched on the roundabout route seven days, and there was no water. No water for the army, nor for the animals that followed them. And the king of Israel said, alas, for the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. But Jehoshaphat Jehoshaphat said, Is there no prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of the Lord by him? So one of the servants of the king of Israel answered and said, Elisha, the son of Shaphat, is here, who poured water on the hands of Elijah, or who served Elijah. And Jehoshaphat said, The word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him, then Elisha said to the king of Israel, What have I to do with thee? Go to the, to the prophets of your father and the prophets of your mother. He said, Go to the prophets of Ahab and Jezebel. That was his mom and dad. But the king of Israel said to him, No, for the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hands of Moab. And Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts lives before whom I stand, surely Were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, I would not look at you nor see you. But now bring me a musician that had happened when the musician played that the hand of the Lord came upon him. And he said, thus says the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. Make this valley full of ditches. 
For thus says the Lord, you shall not see wind, nor shall you see rain, yet that valley shall be filled with water, so that you, your cattle, and your animals may drink. And this is a simple matter in the sight of the Lord. He will also deliver the Moabites into your hand. Also you shall attack every fortified city and every city, every choice city, and shall cut down every good tree and stop up every spring of water and ruin every good place of land with stones. And now it happened in the morning when the grain offering was offered that suddenly water came by the way of Edom and the land was filled with water. I want to talk to us this morning, and I believe I have a prophetic word for Believer's Church today that I want to release into, the, into your hearing and probably even more importantly, into the atmosphere. I want to preach to us and declare the word of the Lord, this title, Ditches in the Desert. Ditches in the Desert. Father, I stand here. God, I'm not here to sermonize. I haven't come to tickle ears or to wow anybody with my hermeneutics and homiletics. But God, I have come to decree and declare the word of the Lord. And I will speak into the realm of the Spirit here today and declare what you have spoken over Believer's Church. God, and I have full assurance that you will bring it to pass. Help us to hear what's being said. Help us to receive it. And God, let this be an, uh, a course-altering day for Believer's Church, I ask it. Everybody said in Jesus' name, amen and amen. So this was after we, we, the days of Ahab and Jezebel. These are names that you hear in the Word of God, that uh, Ahab was the, the king of Israel and Jezebel was his wife. These were not good people. They turned against God and the things of God, and they went after false god, namely Baal. And they had brought Baal worship uh, and Ashtaroth worship into the kingdom of Israel. And they had passed away and... Uh, as, as foretold by the prophets of God, and uh, now their son was reigning, and they were at war with the Moabites. If you read in the Word of God, the Moabites were always causing trouble for the Israelites. And in typology, Moab is, is literally a type of sin and a type of the world, anything that is anti-God. And so it was that uh, the Moabites and the Israelites were at war. God had divided the kingdom of Israel. We had what was Israel, and then we had Judah. Israel had, had wandered away from God. Judah had a good king that was serving the Lord. And so the king of Israel reached out to the king of Judah and said, will you, will you come with us to fight the Moabites? And he reached out to the king of Edom, the three kings together. And they said, yes, because the Moabites are so wicked and because they are a problem for all of us, we will join together and we will attack and defeat the Moabites. And so they, they got their troops together, their chariots, their horses, their soldiers, and they went out to, to fight against Moab. And when they got into a certain place, they realized that they were in trouble. They realized that they were in a desert place and there was no water. And then the king of Israel said, oh no, this is the judgment of God because of what my mom did and what my dad did and because he really wasn't being a good king himself. God has brought the three kings out here and now we're going to die in this desert place. The king of Judah said, what, don't you have a man? God in your life? Isn't there a prophet in, the, in your kingdom that can come and prophesy? And so they called for the prophet of the Lord. And he came and uh, they said, yes, we, we do have a prophet. His name is Elisha. Remember that guy who was plowing and Elijah came by and put his mat. That's the same Elisha. He said, we have Elisha. And Elisha got there. And when he seen the king of Israel, he said, I, if I knew you were going to be here, I wouldn't even come. You're a wicked man. Your mom and dad were wicked people. He said, I'm only here because of the king of Judah. And so he began to prophesy. And he said that, there, that God was going to bring water into this desert place. You won't hear any wind. In other words, what he was saying, don't look for the, don't look for the weather forecast. Don't look for dark clouds. 
Don't listen to see if there's a thunderstorm in the distance. You're not going to hear anything. You're not going to see anything. You're not going to feel anything. How many's ever been in that place with your walk with God where you just have to walk by faith and not by sight? Come on, somebody. He said, you're not going to hear anything. You're not going to see anything. You're not going to feel anything. But God is going to send water into this valley. He's going to bring water into this desert. Oh, that shouting material. Hallelujah. God's going to give us water. God's going to provide. God's going to do it. God's going to work a miracle. We're not going to die here in the desert of thirst. Praise God. But, but, there's no sense in sending the water if you're not prepared for the water. Believers Church, we believe that God has spoken some things over us, but we've got to be prepared to receive them. How many God, you feel like God has spoken some things over your life and given you a word, wave your hand at me, given you a promise. That's good. That's worth shouting about. That's worth getting excited about. But you've got to prepare to receive what God said he was going to do. Oh, I feel like preaching to somebody today. It's not enough to say, I got a word. Hallelujah. I got a word. No. What are you going to do to facilitate the receiving of that word? Praise God. We've been prophesied over here a hundred times or more. In the 12 years that I've been here, God has promised us. And, 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 and there's been prophetic word and prophetic utterance given over this assembly and what God has wanted to do here. And it's not an, it, it excites me. I, I like to hear those words. And I've got prophecies written down. I've got prophecies that I, I was at a conference one time. Nobody, uh, the preacher I'd never met in my life. He was from thousands of miles away from here. He called me out of the crowd of the crowd and prophesied to me what was going to happen in this very church. And I believe we're starting to see the beginnings of that prophecy coming to pass. I've got prophecies written down. I've received words from God. This assembly has received words from the Lord, but it's not enough just to wave those prophecies around like a flag amen and say look what the Lord said we must prepare for what God is going to send us he said I'm going to send the rain or, or I'm going to send the water but you've got to prepare for the water get down in the dirt and start digging <laughs> now how many's ever dug a ditch yeah, it's fun. No, it's hard work. How many have said it's hard work to dig a ditch? It's a hard work. It's even harder in the desert. Listen to me now. They're afraid they're going to die, Brother Rick, because they have no water. So what are we going to do? We're going to do back-breaking labor without any water. I can almost see them as he gave the command to those men who were ready to fight. No, we're not going to fight right now. We're going to dig. Put your sword down. Grab a shovel. We're going to dig some ditches. What are you talking about? We can't dig ditches. We can't even fight. There's no water here. The animals are going to die. We're going to die. If we exert ourselves, we're going to die of thirst. But you don't realize your salvation, your miracle, the fulfillment of the word of God is dependent on you preparing for what God is going to send you. Believers Church, I've come to tell us, hey amen, it's time to get our shovels out and start preparing for everything God has spoken over this church. Saint of God, I prophesy to you today, it's time for you, amen, to get a shovel out and start preparing your life for everything God has promised you because the promises of God are yea and amen to them that believe. Now, if you don't believe, that's fine. Amen. God isn't going to force his word on you. If you don't believe, amen, what God has spoken over the, over the church, I'm not going to lose sleep over it because I believe enough for everybody in this house that God is faithful and God's word is true and he's going to do exactly what he said he's going to do. Amen. So whether you get on board or not, God will do what he said. But for those of you who want revival and those of you who believe in what God is doing, I encourage you today to get ready for what God is going to do. Praise God. Praise God. 
And so in the desert place where there is no water, in the desert place when the sun is beating down in the heat of the day, in the place where it seems hopeless and helpless, they begin to dig ditches. I can only imagine what that site looked like. This was the closest thing I could find. There in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the desert, in the middle of a valley, they begin to dig for something that didn't exist in that place. <laughs> they begin to prepare for something that obviously wasn't a natural occurrence in that area. And they prepared. Why? Because the word of the Lord said, there's water coming. I've been told that God cannot move in this city. I've been told that the days of revival have gone, long gone, in Winnipeg and in Manitoba. I've been told by other pastors, you might as well just calm down. Because Winnipeg is a burnt over field and there's nobody here that wants God. I've been told all kinds of things in the 12 years I've been here. I've been told by well-meaning, misinformed saints that God can't move because of this or that. I don't know who made your opinion greater than God, but God will move anywhere he wants to move. When darkness and chaos covered the face of the earth, a man, God, the Spirit of the Lord, hovered and brooded over the chaos. And when the timing was right, a man, he stepped out and said, let there be light, and there was light. Let there be land, and there was land. He spoke it into existence. And all God has to do is step out into this believer's church and say, let there be, and there will be. I come to tell you today, amen, that God is going to keep his word to believe church. He's going to do what he said he's going to do. I wish somebody would get excited about it with me today. There will be water in the desert. Dig the ditches. Get ready. God is going to pour out. In the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit. Mm. To receive what you need you must prepare for what you don't have. <laughs> to receive what you need, you must prepare for what you don't have. I'm going to dig this ditch. What are we digging for? Well, that crazy preacher says there's going, going to be water here. Where's the water coming from? I don't know. Is it going to rain? No. Uh oh. Is somebody bringing water? No. There's no water to bring. Well, how in the world are we going to get water? We don't know. Well, what did the, how did the preacher say we were going to get it? He didn't say. He said, we're not going to hear anything. We're not going to see anything. It's just going to happen. That's faith. Somebody say faith. Faith. Faith will cause you to cry out to God. Obedience will cause you to dig ditches in the desert. Faith will cause you to cry out, oh God, send revival. But obedience will cause you to act on his word, to prepare for revival, to prepare for what God's trying to do, for, to prepare. Amen. That's what we're doing in, in the Sunday school department right now. We're preparing for what God is. We're thankful for what he's already doing, but we're preparing for what he's going to do. That's what we're doing in every area of ministry within this church right now. We are, we're functioning here, but we're preparing for what God is going to do here. Why are we talking about parking in the service this morning? Because we know that greater things are yet to come. Greater things are still to be done in this city. And we are digging ditches, even even when we don't see the water, even when we don't hear the rain, we are preparing because we know what the word of the Lord is. And I call to task this morning every false prophet and every witch, amen, and every false prophetess that would sit among us and would prophesy against the moving of God and prophesy against this ministry and prophesy, amen, that God can't do this and God can't do that. I arrest you in Jesus' name. I silence your voice. I tell you to shut up because God's word is going to come to pass in this house. Get in, get out, but get somewhere. 
Oh, hallelujah. It's not time to be a mouse. It's time to get bold for Jesus Christ because greater is he that's in us than he that is in the world. Pastor, aren't you scared of losing some? We need to lose some. (laughs) What kind of preacher is this guy? Stick around. You'll find out. You'll find out. If you're not going to believe, amen, you can't even please God. If you're not going to get rid of your sin, God can't bless. Oh, this preacher still preaches the truth around here. Amen. I want to see revival. I want to see a move of God. But we're not going to babysit sinners who don't want to change. We need to cry out, change me, God. Don't let me stay in my sin. Change me. Don't let me stay shacked up. Change me. Don't let me, Lord, be lost in my addiction. Change me. Change me. Oh, I'm feeling dangerous here this morning, Stephen. I don't, I, I don't need to be a better sinner. I need to become a saint. Amen. Now, if this is your first time here and you're living in sin, we're so glad you're here. But if this is your hundredth time here and you're still living in sin, you need to get it right. You need to get it right. Because heaven is real and so is hell. We need to get it right with God. Whew, that was for free. Obedience will cause you to dig ditches in the desert. Digging ditches is hard work, especially when there's no water. Well, it's easy to get excited if there was water everywhere. Woo, hallelujah. But when there's no water, what are we doing? What are we doing? We're preparing. Lord, prepare me. To be a sanctuary, pure and holy. Oh, remember that old song? Tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Prepare me, Lord. Prepare me, because I'm not all I can be yet. Prepare me. I haven't arrived yet. Prepare me. God, I don't have everything that I need. I'm going to dig some ditches. God, I'm not where I want to be. I got to dig some ditches. Believers Church hasn't seen everything we want to see. We got to dig some ditches. We're getting ready for the water to flow. And the water didn't come from the Israelites and the water didn't come from Judah and the water didn't come from Edom and the water didn't come, amen, from Moab. The water came from God. Our obedience to God will never cause us to perish. I'm in the desert. <laughs> I'm digging. I should have had a shovel. Why can't I get a shovel? Get, yeah, get me one, bro. I'm digging a ditch. It's 120 degrees out here. I'm digging ditch I'm going to die out here that's a lie of the devil we keep shovels in the back room just in case (laughs) well it's not even a rounded mouth this is going to be a tough ditch (laughs) that crazy preacher don't he know we're in a drought? What, what are we doing? What do you mean we're going to put in another Sunday school room? Where's everybody? Doesn't he see everybody's missing today? Yeah, it's one day. Get over it. <laughs> what? You're talking about putting in more parking? That's going to cost money. All those preachers talk about is money. Yeah, when you pay my bills, come see me. I'm going to die out here. You're not going to die out here. 
You're going to die if you don't dig. This church will die if we don't dig. You hear this word of God today. This church will die. We are not promised to, that this church is just going to be blessed just because we, we look good. If we don't move with the move of God and we don't flow with his flow and if we don't re respond to the wind of the Holy Ghost and when he says to dig it, if we're not digging, we're going to miss the blessing. When the water comes, we're going to have nothing to hold it. Well, if I get my life straightened out, I'm not going to have any friends. That's a lie. Well, if I get out of my sin and, uh, uh, and uh, no, 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 stop, stop, stop. The blessing of God will come. God will send friends and family your way. God will give you, amen, more than you know what to do with. God is a God of more than enough. He is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord my provider. So there is nothing I can lose. There's nothing I can lose, amen, that God will not replace. I'm not going to die digging this ditch. This ditch is going to be sure that I live. But it's tough, preacher. Yeah, I've been digging this ditch for 12 years. And that's why I get so upset when dear saints come over and kick some more dirt in there. No, 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 no. If you're not going to dig, stay away from the hole. Well, this preacher is mean today. No, this is prophetic preaching. This is prophetic preaching. This is when the word of God gives us a right now word and sometimes it has some edge to it. Sometimes it causes us to step back and some of us don't know how, how to put, oh, I don't dare that preacher. It's not the preacher talking to you. God is talking to this church right now. I'm a nice guy. But sometimes God has to say some things to shake us. Well, who he thinks he is, I'm not digging. Dig or die. Dig or die. Why, why are we in this hole? Because all I know is God said, get ready. And if we'll get ready, he'll do it. How many times has God spoken to churches, including this church, and we thought, man, that's a great word. Whoo, hallelujah. How many times has God spoken to us as individuals? Man, oh, that's great. I can, God said he's going to do this, this, and this, and I'm so excited about it. But we do nothing to prepare for it. I got I to gotta finish here. I left this long time ago. I don't know where I'm at. Jeremiah 32, 37. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Is there anything too hard for God? He's asking us a question. Believers Church, he's asking, is there anything too hard for me? Isaiah 41, 18. I will open the rivers in desolate heights and fountains in the midst of the valley. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. Amen. Hallelujah. I come to them this morning to rebuff the spirit and the prophets of doom. Winnipeg is not a burnt over field. Winnipeg is not a man uh, without hope. Winnipeg is not too far gone. We need to stop talking badly about our city. I hear people say, oh, Winnipeg is just a dump and I can't wait to get out of here and I wish I would. You are here for such a time as this. You are salt and you are light. You are a light that is set up on a hill. Amen. We are here for the, such a time as this. We are here for the move of God. We're here for revival. We're here to see what God will do. Amen. And if we will prepare, if we will dig the ditches, God will send the water. Amen. If we'll pray, God will respond. If we'll build it, he'll fill it. Amen. If we will prepare. God will do the rest. He's not asking us to do anything, amen, greater than he's able to provide for. But if we will take a step of faith, he will make our faith a reality because he's God. He's God. A few months ago, 
we raised some money in this church for a project we were working on. And you guys blew my mind because we needed a certain amount of money. And I brought that need to you. And we reached that number and you guys just kept giving. And it was blowing my mind because even though we had already reached what we needed, people were still saying, I want to give, I want to give. And in that one service, you, you people gave $10,000 to, to that need. I'm telling you, I, I had never in my entire ministry, and I, I've raised money for, for things, and if you're around the kingdom of God, this thing, this doesn't just happen. You don't just wish this into existence. The lights aren't on here today because we're just so good looking that they decide to turn our lights on. Your good thoughts and good wishes and good vibes don't keep the heat on in here in the winter. Am I telling you the truth? Oh, they're passing the offering plate. Let it pass right on by you. God don't need your loony. But if you understand the, 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 the uh, law of sowing and reaping, hello? And so that day we, we raised $10,000 for projects in, in the church, which we completed, by the way. And I was driving home, and man, sister, I was excited. I was like, I have never in all my ministry raised $10,000 in one offering. I, I'm telling you, I could have parked the car and ran home. I was, I was so excited. <laughs> I've never seen that. You know, we, we had, you know, I don't know how many people were even here that morning. I'm like, this is, this is crazy. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, that's nothing. He said, you'll see the day when you will raise 100000 in one offering. Now, why would we need 100000 I'll tell you why. Because God's vision for this city is bigger than some of our vision. This sanctuary will not hold the revival that God is trying to give to Believer's Church. But we've got to be willing to receive it. We've got to be willing to get back into the ditches. It's not enough, amen, that, that the, the people who went before us in this church, amen, I, I could start naming names, amen, Marvin and Norma Jean Simmons, who, who were the founding pastors of this church, and, 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 and Lavallee's and, and, and the Johnson's family and, and other families and, and the Bobbitts who sit here, who were in the ditches and in the trenches, amen, and dug this place out and renovated and paid for it. And here we are today, amen, with a debt-free facility that we can worship in. But I'm prophesying to this church that we in our day are going to have to dig the ditch again. Because God is not done. This building, this sanctuary was never, was never God's plan for this building, this sanctuary, as nice as it is and as thankful as we are for it, to be the, the final resting place and, 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 and uh, the building that would hold everything that was God, God was going to do in this city. I said here a few weeks ago, if God gave us 1% of our city, 1% of our city, we would have to build a stadium to hold it. Is God big enough to have revival and give 1% of this city to his kingdom? We're going to have to get in the trenches again. I, I'm trying to close, but this word has to go out. I will open rivers and desert, desolate heights and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. Our God is the God of the impossible. And he will make a way where there is no way. Psalm 118, verse 1. I'm going to ask the musicians to come back. I, I've got to, I'm nowhere near through this message, but I've got to try and come to close. Psalm 118, 1. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let Israel now say his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron now say his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord now say his mercy endures forever. 
I called on the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is for me among those who help me. Therefore, I shall see my desire on those who hate me. It's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes or government. All nations surrounded me, but in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. They surrounded me, yea, they surrounded me, but in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. They surrounded me like bees. They were quenched uh, like a fire of thorns. Uh, for the name, uh, in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. You pushed me violently that I might fall, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. Exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. Somebody say that with me. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. For the Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go through and I will praise the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous shall enter. I will praise you for you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has given me this scripture over and over and over again here at Believer's Church. He said, what I'm going to do, no man will get the glory, and it will be marvelous in your eyes. And people will look and say, this is the Lord's doing. This is the Lord's doing. Isaiah 43, 18. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. <laughs> Woo! Stand with me. I gotta, I gotta quit. I'll make rivers in the desert. Adabohu shataya. We must look ahead at the new thing God is doing at Believer's Church. We thank God for where we came from. We honor the sacrifice of the past. But it is a new day. And new sacrifices are required. But new victories lay at our doorstep. Jesus said in Matthew 19, 26, But Jesus looked at them and said, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. <laughs> Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 32, 17, Oh, Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. There is nothing too hard for you. I gotta. Jesus said in Luke chapter 19, verse 12, he said, A certain nobleman went to a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. He called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said, Occup Occupy. Everybody say, Occupy. Work. Continue working. Do business until I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him to whom he had given the money, that he may know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came the first saying, Lord, thy pound have gained 10 pounds. And he said, well done, thou good servant, because thou has been faithful in very little. Have thou authority over 10 cities. You've been faithful with what I gave you. You multiplied it. I'm going, to, I'm going to make you a ruler over 10 cities. 
And the second came saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained five pounds. And he said, likewise to him, I'm going to make you a ruler over five cities. God will never elevate you more than what you're able to handle. And another came saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. I didn't let anybody touch it. I didn't let anybody see it. I never put myself out there. I never rubbed shoulders with anybody. I just, I just kept it right here. Lord, I'm giving back what you gave to me. And he said unto him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge you, you wicked servant. Thou knowest that I was an austere man, taking up that I laid down, not down, and reaping that I did not sow. Wherefore then gavest thou not thou my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have re- required mine own with usury. I would have got interest on it. And he said unto them that stood by, Take from him the pound, and give it to him that has ten pounds. And they said, but Lord, he already has 10 pounds. Yeah, but he knows what to do with it. He placed something in their hand and said, occupy until I come. And I'm closing right now. Believers Church, God has placed something in in us. He has placed something in our, in our, in our church, in our, in the ministry here, in our hearts. He has placed something in our hands and he has given us the command, occupy until I come. And what a, what a lot of churches are doing, they're just holding on until Jesus comes. I was preaching at a certain church several years ago and uh, before they asked me to, to, to preach, the pastor's wife got up to sing a special. It was special, all right. And I watched her, poor soul. And she went to that pulpit, white-knuckled, grabbed the pulpit. And she said, church, life is tough. Life is so tough. It's rough being a Christian. She said, we're just barely holding on till Jesus comes. If we can just barely hold on until he comes, we'll be all right. And I sat there and I thought, what a sad way to live for God. And that's the problem with a lot of spirit-filled churches today. We are just barely holding on, hoping that this will be the day the Lord comes. Now, our hope is in his coming. I I look forward to the day when, when, when he comes. But there's something in the heart of this pastor today It says, oh God, wait a little longer. Wait a little longer. I've got to have, I've got to see this revival. I've got to have this revival. God, don't come. Don't come just yet. There's a whole, there's a whole country, there's a whole world that needs Jesus. Lord, just wait a little longer. I've got family members. I've got friends. God, uh, that needs you. Just, just wait a little longer. The church must not sit back and just wait for the coming of the Lord. We must occupy until he comes. That when he comes, Pastor Jose, we can say, God, this is the anointing you gave me. This is what I did with it. This was the calling you gave me. This is what I did with it. This is the years of life you gave me. This is what I did with what you gave me. We must prepare now for what God is doing and what he is about to do. And we must partner with God for revival in this city. People ask me, other pastors, you you really have Bible study every Wednesday night? What are you doing? We're digging ditches. 
you really have prayer every Saturday night? What, what's up with that? We're digging ditches. Does everybody show up? No, not everybody shows up, but the ones that do uh, come with a shovel in the hand uh, and we're digging ditches. Uh, we have church on Sunday like it could be our last service. Why? Because we're digging ditches. Uh, we're digging ditches. Uh, I don't know how it's going to happen, but I know it's going to happen. Uh, the water is coming. The water is coming. The water is coming. The water is coming. I tell you all about. I said the water of the Holy Ghost is coming. The water of the Holy Ghost is coming. If you're building ditches, if you're digging ditches, you don't have time to dig graves. If you're digging ditches, you don't have time to dig ruts. It's time to get busy digging, preparing. I want us all, I just, I just feel like we all just need to come around the front. Let's just get around. I, I think we need to talk to the Lord here this morning. Just come up. Let's make room for everybody who wants to come this morning. Oh, holy God. Speak to your church this morning. God, it's just mere words unless you show up. Speak to your people today. God, I'm not preaching because I'm upset with anybody because I'm not. God, I'm not preaching because, Lord, I, somebody has made me angry at the way they're living. I'm not angry at the way they're living, God. I, I want to, but I do want to see them change. I do want to see, God, you be able to work in their life. God, I do want to see Believer's Church full of the power of God. Just talk to the Lord this morning. Just tell God I'm, get, I'm grabbing a hold of a shovel today. I'm going to get in the. I'm going to get down. I'm going to start digging some ditches. Lord, I'm going to do what's required. I think this needs to be a two-pronged prayer today. I think you need to pray, God. I'm going to do what it takes in my life to prepare for what you're doing. But God, I'm also going to do my part in in Believers Church to help prepare for what you're doing in in my church. God, yes. it's not. Past, I, I get upset when people say, "Oh, your church. Your. It's not my church. It's our church. It's your church as much as it's my church." Hey, Amen. We we're in this thing together. Come on, pick up a shovel. Get in the ditch. Begin to dig, begin to dig, prepare, prepare the water. The water's going to flow, the water's going to flow. Come on, maybe there's some sin you need to dig out in your life. Maybe some rebellion you need to dig out in your life. Come on, dig it out, dig it out, dig it out. Some unforgiveness some wounds, some hurt, uh, maybe just some kind of some complacency. Come on, grab a shovel, dig it out. What are you doing? What are you doing? Why aren't you hanging out with the same people that you use? Uh, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm digging ditches. I'm preparing. Why don't you come out and party with me Friday night? No, I can't, I can't. Why? I'm preparing for what God's going to do in my life. I'm preparing, I'm preparing. Why are you going to prayer meeting tonight? Because pastor needs help. He needs help. He's been digging 12 years. I'm going to go help him dig a little bit on Saturday night. Oh, why are you going to church Wednesday? Uh, there's still some ditches to be done. We're preparing for the outpouring. Let it flow, God. Let it flow, God. Let it flow, God. Let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow like a river. Let it flow like a river. 
God, I know Winnipeg has a drug problem, but let it flow. God, I know we got a homeless situation, Lord, but let it flow. God, I know we're in a mess in many areas, but God, would you let the river, would you let the water flow? I know, God, people have quit churches and churches are closing down, but God, we're still digging a ditch here in the inner city. Let the water flow, let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow. We're not looking for it to come from a program or personality. It must come from God. It must come from God. Hallelujah. 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 Pastor Ose, would you come pray over this, over this crowd, Sister Vivian? Hallelujah. As the pastor was uh, running off, I heard a voice of the Lord saying, I'm calling you, my people. I'm calling you, my people. The greatest mistake you will make this morning is to leave this place and go back to that same place. The Lord is calling you. The Lord is calling you. Come be part of my church. Come be part of my kingdom. Come build my kingdom on the earth. The Lord is calling us this morning. You want to answer that call this morning? Lift your hands if you want to answer that call this morning. Lord, I'm part of your kingdom. I'm part of the you bless here to dig. I will dig until the water comes. I'm not going back. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your word that came to us with power. Lord, as your servant minister, you told me my ears were open. And I saw the prophetic. Lord, may we not live here the same. May this word not stand against us on the last day. When we shall stand before you and to give account of how we live on earth. May this message not stand against us. Oh Lord, we use this message to prepare us for that which you want to do. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, have your way, oh God. As we left our seat and we come before you in the altar, have your way in our lives. Have your way in our lives. Let today become the beginning of a new journey with you in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, raise up great men and women, boys and girls, that will raise up the kingdom of God on the earth. Open our eyes that we might understand that working for you is not a wasted time, a wasted effort. That we might see the benefit of working for your kingdom and becoming part of your kingdom. Help us to understand as a church that you created us for a purpose. That you created us to fulfill a vision. We pray this day we join with our senior pastor in this vision. Lord, oh God, we join. We are in for this vision. Have your way, Lord, this morning. Have your way. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. If you're new in this place, just follow us. Where's Sister Vivian? 
Okay, should we at the back? Okay. So you want to meet with the pastor and you're new here, just connect with our sister at the back there, Sister Vivian. God bless you. Have a nice week.